Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven. I'm J.W. Stewart, joined as always by Bruce Barber. Bruce, Happy New Year to you. J.W., Happy New Year. I think uh, 2024 is going to be a banner year for Charger 360. Power on. Power on. We'll get into that today with <laughs> yes. our guest. Our guest, the first guest for 2024 is Gabby Garcia Perez, who's a grad student here, women's soccer player, and pursuing her master's in finance. Gabby, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. You as well. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. So Gabby, tell us about your, your journey to the University of New Haven. It really wasn't all that long ago you started your journey here, and you didn't come from far away either. Right, exactly. No, I'm Connecticut home and grown. I'm originally from Guilford, which is only about 20 minutes away. And so when I was deciding to pursue different universities, I actually wanted to really play soccer. So that really narrowed down my options in terms of recruitment and the D2 level versus D1. Um, at the end of the day, I chose the University of New Haven because I had such a positive experience interacting with my coach, Coach Laura Duncan, who was really welcoming. Um, she had a lot of great ideas, and I came from a background that had to do with community organizing, nonprofit work, and I was able to continue those same ventures, being that I was close to home here in the city of New Haven and West Haven. And let me tell you something, we are so lucky to have you here. Uh, Thank you. You have been, so you play soccer. Yes. You have a great show called Vibra <laughs> on uh, WNHU. Yes. Uh, what are some of the other uh, things you've got going on? What are you majoring in? Yeah. What are your other interests on? Yeah, campus? so I'm a proud member of the Women in Business Club, which is a great um, club here at the university that has a lot of um, career development opportunities, um, interacting with a lot of guest speakers, um, having pitch competitions. I'm also a College of Business diplomat. so all of the accepted students days and all of the open houses, we have about um, 12 to 13 students who interact with families that are coming to um, see if the University of New Haven is the best fit for them. So on a day, we usually have around 200 people that we're speaking to. So I personally have spoken about the business management program as well as the SLICE, which is our um, shared life client experience. Yeah, is there anything you don't do here on campus? You're involved <laughs> in so many different things. Yes. No, I actually forgot one. I'm also a salsa dancer yes. with my friend Emily. Wow. So we're on Incendio Dance Project. And uh, I just want to mention, I really generally don't like it when I'm upstaged by anyone. <laughs> you know, I really, I like it to be about Bruce. <laughs> the main character energy. So I'm the main character. Yes. But uh, you have found your way onto uh, the billboards <laughs> around campus, uh, a lot of the literature, uh, our new Power On campaign. Uh, yes. Let us know how that happened. Yeah, so Power On was actually such a great initiative that was brought on recently at the university. Um, I remember last year they brought a pool of about 15 students and they laid out all these different graphics and slogans for us. And one of them was Power On. And immediately all of the student athletes and other students, we gravitated towards that. So I'm really gra glad to see that that is now what we have celebrating here at the university with our Zoom backgrounds and all the new graphics around, including the billboard. Well, you mentioned the Power On campaign and slogan. Let's take a look at it. You're like a movie star. Gabby came in with her own clip. Let's take a look here in the monitor wall. We'll roll in and learn a little bit more about Power On. My name is Gabby, and I'm doing my MS in finance. From the time that I got here, I was able to connect directly to my deans and professors, and they all took us very seriously. I had a lot of new ideas and experience with um, entrepreneurship, and these were all things that they highly respected and valued from my character. No joke in the College of Business, we're all about networking, connections, and we all have the same mindset of entrepreneurship and growth and wanting to be successful in life. Even within campus, we have so many opportunities for clubs. All of these sort of groups have really allowed me to interact with different aspects of myself and different interests. In terms of who we are as people, we're gritty, we're authentic, we're genuine. It's the faculty, it's the leadership that we have here and that's a lot to the sense of community that we have here at our University of New Haven. At the University of New Haven, that's where I power on. It's cool to watch Gabby watch herself <laughs> in the promo and you can see her beam. She really is the, the star of stars. What was it like 
doing that, that shoot? So actually three days before that, I had knee surgery. So my entire leg was completely immobilized when I was at the salsa event, when I was DJing, including when I was in Vibras. So it was really funny how Roger, who is part of our marketing team, was able to work with me in that. So I wanted to be able to make it happen, including my classmates. They saw me crutch in with my computer all discombobulated. <laughs> But Roger and his team really made it happen, and I'm really appreciative of that. But we should, we should talk a little about the, uh, the genesis of the Power On campaign, which was really that, you know, I think we felt a need to be able to really express what the University of New Haven's all about. So what I thought was really interesting is we hired the ad agency that did America Runs on Duncan, exactly. Vigo. And I loved their process that you got involved with, which mm -hmm. was, they really listened to all the stakeholders on campus, including students, mm -hmm. and really used that to, you know, guide them. And really, you know, isn't the essence of it that kind of every student has got this, has got these kind of superpowers, have got these, and, and that our mission is kind of to try to help you find them, mm -hmm. you know? Although I think you've done a pretty good job on your own. What does she need us for? <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we might just walk out and she can handle, she, That's you know, exactly she's, the, right. she's the queen of all media here on campus now. Yeah, oh, no. but I think it's interesting the way that they did ask for student input and then you said you gravitated towards that. Yeah, no, and I remember her speaking at one of the events that we had, the faculty, students, and everybody um, involved in the Power On campaign. And one of the things she mentioned was the difference between charge on and power on. Charge on being moving forward, um, kind of breaking down those barriers while power on was flipping that switch. So if you noticed in the, in the video, we had the point where we were at WNHU and I was pressing on the, the power on button, right? And, and moving the, the volume up. And so all of those little, um, all those little factors of the video, I think really spoke to the power on essence of it. But I think that was really important for her to, to mention within that, that big meeting. You shot some of that in here, in this TV studio, is that right? So actually, it was in this building, so mm -hmm. everything was, um, was around campus, which mm -hmm. was really great. And I specifically said that I did want WNHU in there. So <laughs> I was able to represent different aspects of myself with the soccer team sweatshirt on and at WNHU, but then also at the New Haven Salsa Nights, being that I'm Colombian and Ecuadorian and salsa and dancing and music is a big, big part of my life that I love. And talk a little about, as a commuter student, um, what, how you uh, find a, a social life and a community on campus, how you've worked that out. It's obviously been very successful for you. Yeah, so when I was deciding to pursue my education here at the university, it was really evident that I lived very close. And so originally I was going to live on campus, but it was COVID time and my season got canceled. And my parents' only justification for me to live on campus was the fact that I was playing soccer and that I would have 8 a.m. practices. Um, but after that got canceled, they were like, nope, you're gonna commute. And I think at the end of the day, it forced me to really put myself out there even more. Um, join different clubs, go to Zoom meetings at the time, being that it was pandemic and everything was closed. Um, but being a commuter, has really allowed me to interact with so many different aspects of my personality and people. Um, and I think that if anything, I've inspired other commuters to, to reach out to their own network and try to get more involved in their community and specifically the University of New Haven, because it is really easy to sort of just focus on your classes and go home after, but filling up that time within the day to go from class to class by going to meetings and, and work, walking around campus and eating in these um, different dining halls that we have has really um, created this community for me. If you are commuting past the University of New Haven's main entrance and you're driving down Boston Post Road towards Campbell Avenue, up until recently, <laughs> there was a, a billboard on the right-hand side. We got a couple of pictures we can put up on the monitor here. I actually went looking the other day, and they've already changed this, which I was stunned at. I figured we'd keep this up till graduation. But here you are on a billboard. Look at that. Look, I mean, I, <laughs> where's Bruce Barber? That's my question. <laughs> So, Gabby, what, what was your reaction when you saw yourself for the first time on a billboard? Yeah, no, that was definitely crazy. And so Brendan and I both um, were invited to come during the summertime to take some pictures. And ironically, I had just had no surgery a few weeks prior, and I had a cast on my face. And this cast created an allergic reaction where I was 
not looking too good. So my face was red and just <laughs> irritated. And then Brendan texts me and he's like, tomorrow at 2.30, we have to be on campus taking pictures. And I'm like, <laughs> like we're gonna have to cover this up. Amazing. So in the picture, my face and everything was so red, but it actually ended up working out. And I'm really, really happy that I was able to share this with Brendan, who I've been um, just with throughout the whole university um, journey has been my partner in classes and, and just collaborating on different programs. He was also a College of Business diplomat, so I'm um, really glad to be able to share that with him. And I think, you know, one thing uh, that I think of now is, and, and hearing the story, we should, we should say that, you know, so you are an elite soccer player <laughs> and then you, what was, your, what was your injury? Yeah, so last year I tore my ACL just playing pickup. And then this summer I was in a car accident and it ended up being a tear of my meniscus on the other knee. And ironically, the same day that I called my coach to tell her that I was doing really well with my ACL and that I was gonna be back and ready for the fall, it was the same day of the accident. So things you happen. Got hit, just stopped and Yeah, stopped I was like... completely stopped and they rear-ended me at like 50 miles per hour. Oh. So my car was completely crunched. Um, I had a large laceration on my eye, so my eyelid fell off, like my nose broke. My, my, sorry, my meniscus was torn and Ugh. my neck and back were pretty messed up as well. But luckily we've left all the surgeries in 2023 and now we're moving on and sort of going through physical therapy and, and all the measures to be able to go back on the field in the fall. Yeah, you were saying that before we started recording here today that even though you have the opportunity to graduate in May, you're gonna stick around. Tell yes. us about that. Yes, yes. Um, so I actually participated in the three plus one program here at the university, which was also another factor in terms of why I came to UNH. Um, but I ended my bachelor's last year and I started my, my master's in finance program. Um, I could have easily finished in May, being that I had all the requisites completed, but I am an athlete who hasn't really been able to play the four, full four seasons of soccer and I wanted to have the opportunity to do so. So I decided to stay another season for the fall and luckily my coach was really understanding of that and supportive um, in terms of my academics. My advisors were able to coordinate that as well. But over the past two years or so, I've basically been the social media manager for our team because I cannot just sit on the sidelines. I had to be doing something. So since then, since the injury, I asked my coach, can, can I take pictures and start posting on the Instagram? And, and luckily we were able to do that and increase followers, increase um, uh, interaction with the public and get more recruits to understand what our program looks like from a day-to-day -day basis. And it's worth um, mentioning, you know, you, you spoke about what you're doing, which is the three plus one, mm -hmm. just so people understand. That's where you basically, in four years, mm -hmm. if you really, you've got to be very, you know, laser focused, yes. right? But in four years, you can come out of here with a BA and an MBA. Exactly. Correct? Yes. You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you save money, you save time. Um, I think it definitely was worth it. And actually, I was able to meet a lot of my close friends through that program as well. We got about two minutes left, and, and there's still a lot to get to here. Uh, you know, you, you're so involved in so many different things. Being a student, being a student athlete, it's like working two full-time jobs. But you've had real-world experience in terms of internships and, and a company you've started. You're the founder and director of CIMP. What is that, and what do you do, Gary? Yeah, so CIMP is the Community Integration Mentoring Program, and the idea is to unite students all around the Connecticut shoreline to be involved within their community, regardless of English abilities, means, um, background. And so this was in a way for us to unite all of the shoreline being that we do have such different cultures and um, avenues of, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just a lot of different people that we can connect. So um, a lot of our students range from elementary school all the way to high school and college students. Um, we've run food drives, grocery initiatives. We've had students um, participate in supporting homelessness. Um, all of these ideas though are coming out of the students. So the idea is the programming, the ideas behind it, the planning is all student focused. Um, and through that, I've actually been able to connect with a lot of nonprofits and community organizing initiatives, including Arte Inc., which I now work for as um, the Saturday Academy administrator, where we have about 100 students each week come to take different music classes free of charge, and all of the classes are taught by high school and college students that are in the music field. Okay, I've changed my mind. She should be on the <laughs> billboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I was stunned that they actually changed the billboard. That's the other day, That's, I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, get her back up there. <laughs> wow, just incredible. Uh, last thing as we get ready to wrap up here, we're going to go over, but that's all right, because I wanted to ask you real quick, Gabby, you've done so many things. You did the internship at Boeing, you interned in the lieutenant governor's office here, mm -hmm. you have the extra time now to come back. When you do graduate, when you do move on, we will be very sad when that day comes. What do you want to do with your life and career? That's the question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we ask the tough questions yeah. here on Charger that's 360. Right. Yes. You're right. You're right. No, I guess having the experience of a corporate background with Boeing and then also the public service with Lieutenant Governor and my experience with community organizing. I have so many different aspects of my career that I want to encompass all together. So hopefully I can find a, a position or a job that sort of highlights all of those three avenues of corporate worlds, community focus, and government. That being said, the answer is continuously evolving. I'm sure that it was evolving for you guys as well. So. I think that I just want to be able to create an impact, travel, and um, work within my community and be a supportive outlet for those who need it. I think she'd be good in the politics. <laughs> I think, I think she's... We need somebody like Gabby <laughs> in the politics. No doubt, no doubt. Wow. Gabby is the star of stars. She can do anything she wants. She's going to be a success when she does it. Power on, Gabby. Power on. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. Gabby Garcia Perez, our guest today here on Charger 360. And that'll wrap up this edition of Charger 360, telling the stories of the University of New Haven. For Gabby, for Bruce, I'm J.W. Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.